Hello. Now today is Friday. Praise God. I'm so excited. Why am I excited? Because today is Friday. Listen, it's time to begin to apply everything you have been listening to. I told you the other day how to put them to work. Number one, meditate on it. Number two, share it. What should you share? The things that the Holy Spirit has begun to teach you. Let me tell you this truth. When the Holy Spirit begins to teach you about something you've been hearing, it means He's confirming it to you that you are a partaker of that thing. And so what do you do? Begin to take action. And this way your faith begins to work. So as you begin to apply these things and, and meditate on the, the teachings that have been given to you all month, see, you begin to apply them. You have the whole of tomorrow. Maybe you say, you say work is my distraction. Okay, you have a weekend ahead of you. What do you do? What do you do at your ninth time? Feed your spirit. And then as you feed, you're listening. You're like, oh, this we talk to me about this. Holy Spirit, talk to me about this. Is this true? Wow, Holy Spirit, I never knew this before. I never had this understanding before. Lord, how come you never spoke to me about this? Yeah, that's what I do. When I hear something new, when I hear a message that blesses me so much, I say, Lord, how come you've been hiding this from me? And then he begins to minister to me on it. Hey, it is when he begins to me, then I realize, oh, that means I have a portion in this thing. So what? Then I, began to, I begin to plan. And I begin to put my faith to work. I begin to confess it. See, I told you, when you're done with that, begin to speak. Now, speaking, let me tell you what preaching does. Preaching makes you speak it. Because we speak or we preach what we believe. We don't preach because we read something somewhere. Now, I know there are people like that. But we, real ministers of God, will preach what the Lord is dealing with them in their hearts. So they are, that's the opportunity they use to confess the word. See, because sometimes people say, oh, why is it that the pastor is the only one that the word of God is working in so much? I'll tell you the reason. You don't preach like the pastor. The pastor, is, he's receiving from the Lord. And he's, you go day in, day out to listen to him. What do you think he's doing? He's confessing what the Lord is teaching him. And he's confessing it before all these brethren. Yeah, praise God. So what happens to him? The, the, the angels see to it that he is never put to shame where that truth is concerned. So what do I do? Preach! Praise God. Preach like him. Preach. You don't have to have a whole church to preach to. Hey, start from your neighborhood. Start from your friends. Start from your colleagues. I mean, I just learned something. Yeah, I, I need to teach you what I learned. Man, you know, break time, I need to see you. We need to talk about something. So what is it? I'll tell you by break time. And then break time, you say, man, I just learned something from God's word. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? I say, um, are you sure? Hey, hey, listen, listen. I was made. This is what the Holy Spirit told me. Now, I tell you this. As long as you open your mouth and you're speaking it and preaching it and preaching it, I tell you what, you are attracting angelic activities all around you. This is why we are not quiet. This is why I'll sit down here and I'm saying these things to you. Because it's the truth. What did the Lord say? What I tell you in the ear, do what shouted on the housetop. Why? So the angels, even the angels will hear you. And know. Because you see, when, now you're being taught. But God have commanded the angels when they hear you talk about these things. So now the information has dropped in your heart. What are you going to do? Keep quiet. I'm waiting. You know, sometimes people say, I'm waiting to see it happen in my life first before I begin to say. You don't realize that the Lord has told the angels when you say, when they hear these words come out of your mouth, not when they hear it enter you. Anything can enter you. Jesus actually said, it's not what enters a man that defiles the man, but what comes out of the man, that's what defiles him. So if, your, if what comes out of your mouth can defile you, not what enters into you, it also means what comes out of your mouth is what is going to bless you or upgrade you. You get that? So it must come out of your mouth. Don't say, hey, I'm praying, I'm meditating on it. Before I begin to say it out, I want, I want to be sure that the thing is working. The only assurance you receive is the assurance of the Holy Spirit. See, 
when he tells you, hey, son, this is it. I told you that. The moment he tells you, talks to you about it, you now know that you have a portion in this thing. <laughs> so what? Speak it. Claim it. Declare it. Not just by yourself in your room. I declare. Oh, I declare. When you finish declaring in your room, how bold is your faith outside? Do you step outside and you know, maybe you're in debt and you're praying, oh God. And then this message is coming to you like, oh, so if all these angels are walking around, so how come I'm still owing this much? How come I'm still in debt? You say, Lord, no, 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 something is wrong. Lord, what do I do? And then the Lord begins to speak to you. Hey, this is what you should do. This, wow, thank you, Lord. I, I, begin, I will start doing it immediately. Now, because he has told you what to do, it's as good as settled. So you step out and you begin to say, hey, you know that money I'm owing? I'll pay it up in one month. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you say, I'll pay it up in one week, truly in one week you'll pay it up. Now what am I saying? The assurance of the Spirit of God comes in you as you meditate on the Word. The moment you get it, that the Holy Spirit is now teaching you about it, it means you have a portion in it. Now begin to declare your faith. So based on that, if you tell someone, I'll be out of this situation in one month, I'll tell you what, the angels will see to it. That's none of your business now. It's none of your business. It was none of Elisha's business, how food was going to become that cheap when he spoke it. It was none of his business. God never said, now that you have spoken, oh God, you need to go and start farming you. No, no, his own was to speak. And when he spoke, the angels began to walk behind the scene. They, they, they had already, see, see, oh, Masha Yakaba. You see, God, the Syrian army had already encamped around the city. With all their food and stuff was dead. And then God said, declare. Because I've set it up. Imagine, they are there, oh, we're in trouble. Because the city was shut. That's why there was famine. The city was shut. They couldn't come out so that the Syrians would not come in. See? So they were all scared. Now, they were only eating what they had until it finished. Now, that was how long they were in that situation. Meanwhile, the Syrian army had equipped themselves with enough food to last that battle. So when the Lord said, Speak! He, you don't understand. He had already arranged everything. And now all he's saying is, speak, Elisha, speak. The same thing God is doing in your life. Now he's saying, speak. Brother, speak. Sister, speak. Oh, the doctors have said I can never give birth. Ah, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Ah, we're going to try IVF. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then you go before the Lord. Say, You're hearing a message like this. And you say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand. So, so how, how am I supposed to be in this kind of situation? It's not possible. It's not possible. Lord, talk to me about this. And the Spirit of God begins to talk to you about this. Say, hey. You step out and say, hey. In one year, I'll have my baby. In one year, I will have my baby. So, what do you mean by that? I had a witness. Ah, you don't understand. You don't understand. Whatever situation you find yourself in, there are enough angels with the, enough, with the requisite intelligence to bring you out of that situation. And I'll tell you something that will shock you. The solution is never far away from you. You, you know, you read things like, like Peter was in prison and he was sleeping, but the church was praying. What happened? An angel came into that prison, tapped him, hey, get up, follow me. And he followed that angel until he got out of jail. Paul and Silas were in prison, they prayed. What happened? The chains fell off, the prison doors were open. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. What happened? The Lord sent his angel. This was Daniel's testimony. The Lord sent his angel to quiet, shut the mouth of the lion. Say, hey, lions, this is not food for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Kamasha Brako Sefradika Dahasa Ika Dihede. 
<laughs> However, the angels did it. Maybe they chained the lions down. You know, they just chained them with their own rope. You know what I mean? Chain you down here, chain you down here, chain you down here. And then Daniel walked into that place comfortably. He wasn't scared. He wasn't scared. Now, he didn't throw himself into the lions then. You know that. <laughs> I told you this before. Whenever there's trouble around you, angels are already activated. Daniel was never scared. When he said, look, if you pray, we'll throw into the lions then. He was never scared about it. Why? Because he understood the lions then. And the Lord will send his angels now. The same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you don't bow, we'll throw into the fire. I said, ah, fire. It's not a problem. The Lord will deliver. Why? Because they feared the Lord. And guess what? The angel of God encamps around those who fear him. So when you do, ah, I come and can look for a dish and look at that. Where is your confidence as a child of God? Where? And someone threatens you, if you preach, we're going to deal with you. And I, eh, let's, let's, let's calm down. No? Let's calm down. You know, we have to be very careful. No, sir. No, sir. Neither am I telling you be stubborn. No, we are not stubborn people. <laughs> you know, some say, you're very stubborn. No, I'm not stubborn. I just know who I'm obeying. <laughs> yeah. So you take it to God. They say, don't preach again. All right, fine. Thank you. King, you know who always obey you, right? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Then you go back and say, Lord, what do I do? They say, I should not preach. And Lord says, son, I have commanded you to preach. So we are not stubborn at all. Don't think we are stubborn. We just obey a higher authority. So when such a thing happens, what do you say? You go back to the Lord first. That's the first thing you do. You go back. The same thing Daniel did. Hey, don't pray again. He went back before the Lord. said, Lord, they said we should not pray. What do you say? I said, are you not praying to me now? Yes. You know, I can't stop talking to you. And he was in the business with talking to God. Then they came to arrest him. You say, oh, we saw you praying. So we're throwing the lions then. The God who he was obeying took charge of the situation. The same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, if you, bow, if you don't bow, we'll throw into the furnace. He said, it's not a problem. I went before the Lord. Can you imagine what the king is saying? We know we're not supposed to bow. But what are you saying to us? God spoke to them and said, don't bow. Okay. So, king. We're not careful to answer you in this matter. And guess what? They said it respectfully. If they had been rude to the king, the king would have commanded, not even the phone, commanded them to be slaughtered. But because they were so respectful in their stance, and that's one thing we must learn as believers, the government has never been our problem. No government anywhere has been our problem. But you see, we need to understand how we function in wisdom and then state our authority on the earth. So it's simple. When you're obeying a higher authority, you don't need to be rude to the low authority. You just take your stand. You say, they say, well, I should not preach. Okay, Lord, what do I do? The Lord said, preach. Okay, so, hey, why are you doing what you're doing? No, God commanded us to preach. You know, Peter and the early disciples, they say, say, who do we obey? God or you? You tell us. <laughs> because they knew, now the, the, the disciples knew that they would surely never tell them to disobey God. So they choose, who should we obey? God or men? Brothers and sisters. See, why, why were these men bold? Because of the angels. They knew they were there. And that's the same thing you take advantage of. Take advantage. Be bold. Never, never shy away from the things that God is saying to you. If you are in doubt, go before the Lord and get confirmation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak courage into your life right now. A new kind of courage. And I declare you will see manifestation this weekend. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, go and shine and bring forth fruits. In Jesus' name. I'll see you on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.